the blessing of God. And secondly, I'd like to respond to some of the criticism that's happened. First of all, I'd like to especially say thank you to Councilman Glenn, who voted yes on this issue, being himself Jewish, standing with the Constitution as a First Amendment lawyer, and saying, you know what, all the people in our city, whether they're Catholic, Buddhist, Evangelical, deserve equal access to city resources to pray. So I just want to give kudos to Councilman Glenn for taking a position of true leadership of standing on side of the whole city and not just one demographic that's putting pressure on him. That man truly deserves to lead. And secondly, my response to Councilman Scott Galvin, who basically is criticizing this event because of our viewpoint on sexual ethics, I would like to say that he is on the record saying that I voted no on this equal access issue as a legitimate nonprofit because of his viewpoint discrimination towards our organization as Christians, as conservatives, and, and, and even people who represent conservative Islam, conservative Judaism, so on and so forth. And I would like to say that I'm asking the gay community to, to rebuke such discriminatory, extreme language, even for homosexuals that basically says that people of different viewpoints cannot access, even though they meet all the criteria, city resources, city public space, that our First Amendment protects us on our viewpoint and our speech. And I would say that's the type of discrimination that's keeping people from accessing public funds, public resources, that no person should practice, whether you're a Christian, a Catholic, everyone should have access to public resources in which they are also taxpayers and contributors to the life of the city. And lastly, we would like to say, join us on May 2nd for this National Day of Prayer, and we are asking all people to not practice discrimination in the public square, but to allow free speech, uh, free worship of religion in the public square in which people are able to exercise their First Amendment rights. Thank you guys, and we hope to see you May 2nd here at the National Day of Prayer in North Miami. Pastor, you are being systematic hostility, murder, raping, pillaging, and kidnapping of people, or do they mean that we disagree on a viewpoint, the way that some people don't like the Miami Dolphins, the way that some people don't agree with baptism, the way that some people don't agree with Islam's theological beliefs. Differing viewpoints is not anti and it's not hate. It just means that we have a different sexual ethics and as as most of the population in the world, Islam, Judaism, and Christians believe in traditional marriage on this issue. And we would say that the semantics of anti-gay in itself is an absurdity and doesn't even uh, correctly define our viewpoint because we love homosexuals. I have homosexual friends and, and we, 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 we will embrace, we will hug, and we will work with homosexuals. And that is not hate and that is not anti. Gays are a protected group, and they have been victims of violence. Uh, very minimal in comparison to my ancestors, which is the Armenians. Over one million Armenians were killed in the genocide. Over millions of um, uh, Jews were killed by the Nazis. So when we say anti, we definitely mean anti on a mild, minute level in such a way that, that in such a way that subgroups are hip hop, I'm part of the hip hop culture, and we've been hated on. So in a sense, anyone who dislikes hip hop, I wouldn't walk around from a from a philosophical viewpoint and coin them anti. Anti traditionally has meant in which you are systematically trying to uh, 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 induce and incite violence and public discrimination and not particular viewpoints, especially in the private and religious sector. Pastor Jack. Do you Jack. think that some of those comments that you have made would incite violence against gay people? Well, anything can incite violence. If I say right now that I don't like rock music, I wish all rock music would just be gone, and there are people who have those preferences of genre music, that can incite violence, but we know in, a, in, in the First Amendment constitutional uh, nation that such language, one is responsible for the way they respond to other people's viewpoints and dislikes. So no, it, it, I think criminal speech is threatening. Tell people, let's go hurt uh, this people group, the people who love this 
this type of genre, that has been traditionally hate speech. So even the loose use of anti and hate haters, it in itself is a semantical absurdity because I've never heard an evangelical or a Catholic priest or pastor ever, ever even whisper, let's let's get these people, let's hurt these people, let's discriminate against these people in public square. There's private religious beliefs, but never to the point where anyone has ever talked about let's incite our kids towards violence. That has been traditionally hate speech, threatening and anti. So to say anti, uh, uh, anti-gay is comparable to anti-Semitism, I think the Jewish community should be uh, outraged. African Americans who were enslaved for 200 years, raped, kidnapped, to compare that same language to anti-gay and what's happening in our modern culture, which is more of a viewpoint uh, di- uh, differences, is, is, it doesn't make logical sense. Pastor Jack, will you yes. commit today to not using this event to criticize and denigrate the gay community. Yeah, basically that label was put on us by Councilman Scott Galvin. The purpose of this event is what it is. It's called the National Day of Prayer. The focus is to ask God for compassion upon all people. Will you be talking about gay people? No, we won't. No, the purpose of the event is to ask God for compassion upon all people, gay, heterosexual, atheist, non-religious. We want God's love and blessing upon all people and that's really the christian gospel god loves the world that he that he that he, that he gave his only begotten son and, and that's, that, that's the let's say something sure. tolerance Sorry, can you say your name david vega from mission Meyer. tolerance is a two-sided coin what pastor jack believes here the way we believe does not change while we're here to pray for what happens if we decide to say you know, we, we really don't agree with the councilman in his point of view or his outtake. Should we persecute him? Should we say, we, you know, you should be out of office because of this reason? Listen, that's your belief. This is our belief. We're not here to fight, discuss, and criticize each other. We're here because we want to respect where we stand as a church group, where he stands as a councilman, and above everything, National Day of Prayer is not about Pastor Jack. It's about all the pastors here that you see getting together to meet together, pray together, to bless this city and and to bless the people of this area. Our response is this. Will save gay? Will the gay pastors and organizations chastise such extremist language? Because I'm going on the record right now to say if an evangelical or Catholic priest or pastor or politician ever withholds public access that is based on equal access to resources, city space, city equipment, as long as they meet all the criteria. If they ever do that, I will publicly uh, uh, connect with those gay organizations and rebuke that religious person for not allowing the public square to be truly what it is, a neutral space where there's disagreement over ideas, there's public conversation, there's public debate. Will save day, will these organizations chastise people who minimize the First Amendment and public square debate and discussion that should be done civilly, but should allow everyone to access public equipment and resources? That's our struggle, and we're taking a commitment for justice and true equality in line with Martin Luther King and the Civil Rights Movement. We thank you for your time, and we thank you for being here. And our prayer goes out to everyone that's here.